Fox 16 News at 530 starts now. We are following breaking news in Southwest Little Rock as a bear has gotten stuck in a tree and getting a lot of attention. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us for Fox 16 News at 530. I'm Donna Terrell. I'm Kevin Kelly. Our Haley Brooks joins us live as Arkansas Game and Fish is trying to work out a game plan to safely get the bear down. Haley, I know the bear's been up there for a while. Are we making any progress? Donna Kevin, we are not making any progress. He stood up a little bit ago to stretch his legs, but he is still hanging out in the exact same spot way up in the tree. Now, Arkansas Game and Fish say they believe that this little guy is one year old male cub or male bear who is about 175 pounds. But he looks pretty cute from down here. Uh, Arkansas Game and Fish say he had a really rough morning, though. Earlier, he was spotted in someone's yard and he was actually shot at, which is what caused him to go up into the tree in the first place. Arkansas Game and Fish say they are they need him to come down the trees about halfway before they can tranquilize him because they believe if they do it when he is this high, the fall would likely kill him. So the goal is to safely remove him once he climbs further down and to take him to Washington National Forest. There is a team behind, you can't see because it's, there's a house here, but there is a team behind the house that's just waiting until he comes down a little bit farther and they're just, they're ready to go. So the goal is to safely remove him and uh, take him out of here, but there's a ton of people on the street, so it could be a while before they're actually able to get him to come farther down the tree. But we'll keep you updated. For now, reporting live in Little Rock and Haley Brooks, back to you. Hopefully he'll come down soon. Turning now to a breaking news update after two women say they were attacked on a trail in Hot Springs. It happened here in the area of Greenway Trail near Golf Links Road in Hot Springs. Our Rochelle Turner joins us live from the Hollywood Park where these two incidents happened. Rochelle. Yeah, Donna, Kevin, good evening to you. Very scary moments for those two women who were walking right along this trail right here behind me when they were approached by the same guy who sexually assaulted them. Police say no matter where you at, it's important to check your surroundings. And if you have to, you can use your car keys to protect yourself if you're in danger. Now, this is video from from the incident that we shot today. It happened around three o'clock yesterday. Police say the first woman was in the park and a, she says that the male tried to force himself on her. During the struggle, the woman was knocked to the ground and hurt. That same day, police say another woman told police the same guy touched her inappropriately. I spoke to several people today who just couldn't believe what happened, knowing that this is a very family park where people just come and enjoy themselves. It's terrifying, it really is. And I was very, very shocked to hear that because this is the time we usually come and we've never seen any suspicious activity or anything. Now Hot Springs Poli Police say the suspect is a male in his 20 to 30s. He's six feet tall. He has on a white t-shirt and a white mask. So if you know anything about these two incidents or if you've seen this person, police say it's important to give them a call. Now, police did tell me that they're also stepping up patrol here in this area during this week, and they also have different signs like this all around the park. So if you see something, it's important to say something. For now, reporting live in Hot Springs, I'm Rochelle Turner. Back to you. All right, Rochelle, thank you very much. Keep in mind, this is a story we broke using the Fox 16 News smartphone app. To be the first to get breaking news alerts, you can download the app for free. You'll find it in the App Store or on Google Play. Now, weather to plan your day with Fox 16 Chief Meteorologist Jeff Baskin. But of course, after a wet and sometimes stormy weekend, it's a beautiful Monday out there. Blue skies, low humidity, warm temperatures, and you can see those blue skies right now across the Little Rock area. The Arkansas River, though, running pretty high. Not expected to make it up near flood stage, but still pretty high. The river is going to crest tomorrow in Little Rock and then start to recede. Let's take a look at the satellite and radar. You can see that we have, well, nothing on radar, no rain around today, finally, but we have mostly sunny skies, especially central and south, but some clouds across parts of north and northeast Arkansas. Those clouds rotating around an area of low pressure that's up over the Midwest, and that will circulate a few clouds down as we go through the next couple of days as that system drops towards the south and east, but not really much in the way of any rain, at least 
not over the next two days. And let's take a look at temperatures. Pretty warm where we've had sunshine all day, upper 70s and lower 80s. These temperatures not so much different than they were, say, yesterday at this time, but the humidity is considerably lower. Now where we've had the clouds, that's kept temperatures a bit cooler in the 60s and low 70s. So here's your hour by hour forecast for this evening. Mostly clear across central Arkansas, a few clouds north and pretty comfortable as temperatures drop down into the lower 60s. But don't expect this nice, comfortable air to stick around too long. Some big changes on the way as we head towards Memorial Day weekend. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. We continue to follow the impact of the coronavirus in Arkansas. During today's news conference, we got more information on yesterday's spike in cases. Out of those 181 cases reported yesterday, 131 of those were in the prison system. So here's a look at the latest numbers for today. The total positive cases rose to 4,813. There have been 3,645 recoveries. 1,068 cases are still active, meaning the patients have not fully recovered. And today we learned of two additional deaths, bringing that total to 100. The governor taking time at his daily briefing to address a number of issues, including the data breach on the state's unemployment website, as well as announcing when most bars in the state will reopen. Our Jay Bird joining us live with information on both of those important topics. Jay. Yeah, Kevin, the governor today providing very few details on what happened with the PUA website that caused roughly 30,000 plus applicants data to be breached. Now, the governor, again, not providing a lot of details, but did say that the invest investigation is still ongoing and now the FBI is actually involved. But the breach came to light when a computer programmer allegedly tried to contact authorities on the threat of a breach into that system. The site was taken down last Friday and Secretary of Commerce Mike Preston says they will still continue continue processing those claims that they do have. Several issues with the rollout of the PUA payments and website have arisen, but the governor not speculating on what this actually means for the security of the website. What does that mean in terms of, uh, of uh, the sophistication of the breach or the sophistication of the weakness? Uh, I think I'll wait and get a report from the uh, experts as to uh, exactly uh, how that should be interpreted. The governor also announcing that bars can resume business in Arkansas. Now, for bars that are associated with restaurants, they can actually reopen beginning tomorrow. As for standalone bars, they can resume operation next Tuesday. That's May 26. Now, currently, there are no specific guidelines that apply to either entity, but officials did say that in terms of the restaurant bars, likely what will take place is a lot of the restaurant guidelines that are currently in place will just extend to those areas, but they are working on on some more specific guidelines for standalone bars. Hopefully that will be out either later tonight or early tomorrow. Live from the state capitol, Jay Burr, Fox 16 News. All right, Jay, thank you. And the chairman of the Democratic Party of Arkansas reacting to the pandemic unemployment assistance website investigation. Here's what he had to say. This demands an investigation once again from the governor's office, potentially from the attorney general's office and i would encourage the senate pro tem and the speaker of the house to create a truly bipartisan committee to review these and report back to the arkansans and the republican party of arkansas responded with a statement saying in part it is easy to backbench from a superior super minority without having to be responsible for one iota of public policy implementation. I believe Governor Hutchinson, Secretaries Smith and Preston are the right leaders for this time. Oaklawn Casino is now open for business. The slots and tables opened up at 9 a.m. this morning. Gambling, however, is limited to 33% capacity. Players and staff must wear face masks at all times. Smoking inside, not allowed right now, as displays scattered on the floor indicate. You'll also notice many machines turned off, reading out of order. Chairs have also been removed from tables to enforce social distancing. The casino's general manager telling Fox 16 employees will double as social distancing police to make sure everyone follows the rules. 
and when we feel that the casino is uh, is, is is not handling that that social distancing, then we'll ultimately shut the doors and we'll wait for it to dissipate, and then we'll let more people in. Casino hours are different as well. Oaklawn opens at 9 each morning, but closing times vary depending on the day. For a list of rules and times, just head to our website, fox16.com. Still to come, with everything that's been going on these past few months, it's understandable people need some kind of comfort. But what do you do when your companion animal is not allowed inside? Learn how health care providers are making it work while managing to keep people safe. Donna Terrell's Family Health, sponsored by Arkansas Diagnostic Center. Because of COVID-19, visitors are limited at hospitals across the state, and that includes visitors with four legs. Scully, the therapy Golden Doodle, typically visits local hospitals five to six times a month, but those physical visits are on pause, and his handler, Katie Caston, has had to get creative. For the past two months, she has relied on technology to bring smiles to the faces of patients. Have the animal live with them. They can talk to the animal. They can ask us to pet their ears or to do different things, and we can do tricks for them. <laughs> well, Caston says even after hospitals loosen up restrictions, Pet Partners wants to continue doing virtual visits so that they can reach more people. Scully's a cool dog. Dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic may not always be easy for some people. And with the month of May being Mental Health Awareness Month, one group is hoping to help those find relief in a time when it may be scary to ask for help. Stacy Hansen is a licensed clinical social worker with advanced recovery systems and works with people with mental health issues. Henson says people have faced a number of problems, from losing a job to caring for kids at home and some not being able to see loved ones in person. She says a new survey shows the stark reality of people turning to substances, both legal and illegal, to try and find some kind of relief. It's like anything. It's like a pot on the back of the stove. If you let it boil, it's going to boil over, right? And so if we don't address it and we aren't proactive about it, we may have more you know, loss in revenue from workers that are missing work. According to a recent national survey, 87% of people who are unemployed 
say they're more likely to use alcohol heavily during this time, some even admitting using while working from home. For more information, just head to our website, fox16.com. Now, weather to plan your day with Fox 16 Chief Meteorologist Jeff Baskin. Okay, so it wasn't exactly the best weekend out there. Lots of rain and even some storms. And some of those storms produced a few tornadoes across parts of southwest Arkansas during the day on Saturday. Most of those in southwest Arkansas, but there were several mainly brief tornadoes that did hit southwest Arkansas from Nevada County over down towards the Texarkana area. Most of these rated EF0, EF1 with winds anywhere between 70 and 100 miles per hour in the, in the case of the EF1 tornadoes and one tornado near the Oklahoma border that does not yet have a rating. Fortunately, didn't have a whole lot of significant damage, some minor damage and no injuries. Well, we don't have to worry about storms or even any rain over the next couple of days. It's going to be dry, mild, low humidity, but that changes by later in the week as that Gulf moisture returns, and that's also going to lead to some higher rain chances, especially as we get into the weekend. Wouldn't you know it? Now, let's take a look at the humidity trend. Very dry over the next couple of days, so warm sunny afternoons or mostly sunny afternoons and some cool, comfortable evenings and mornings. But then that humidity creeps back in as we go through the middle of the week and especially by the end of the week, and it's going to be pretty muggy out there again by the time we get towards the weekend. Satellite and radar showing mostly clear skies, although a few clouds rotating across parts of northern Arkansas around an area of low pressure. You see it's circling around Illinois and that area of low pressure is slowly going to drift southeastward. So that's going to circulate a few clouds across us over the next couple of days, but not much in the way of rain. And it's also going to prevent that heat that you see building across Texas with temperatures in the upper 90s near 100. That heat is not coming our way over the next couple of days. Our temperatures staying pretty steady. As we take a look at temperatures right now across the state where we've had the cloud cover 60s to low 70s where it's been sunny most of the day, upper 70s to around 80 degrees and low to mid 80s south right now in Little Rock area, mostly clear sky. So they see a few clouds out in the distance and a bit of a breeze out there. You can see the camera shaking a little bit. Winds out of the northwest at 16 miles per hour right now. 79 degrees, humidity only 42%. So that air is dry. So as we take a look at the overnight hours, mostly clear skies. But again, some of those clouds rotate around, especially as across parts of northern and eastern Arkansas. That's where we have the most cloud cover. Western Arkansas will be mostly sunny. Not a whole lot of change as we go into Tuesday as that area of low pressure doesn't move all that much. But here comes that warmer air slowly moving back in as we get towards later in the week, and that's going to mean an increase in rain chances and a lot more humidity. So as we take a look at tomorrow, temperatures starting off pretty cool, only in the mid 50s, but warming up into the upper 60s near 70 by noon. High temperatures getting up into the mid to even upper 70s, especially where you have sunshine, although a few degrees cooler where those clouds stay persistent. And as we go into the evening hours, partly cloudy, but pretty comfortable temperatures in the mid 60s. Pretty much the same on Wednesday, not much difference, but that humidity starts to increase as we go into Thursday as that warm front starts to move on in. A couple spotty showers and then rain chances increase throughout the weekend, especially as we get towards Sunday and Memorial Day. Looking a little bit questionable right now, but staying warm and humid with high temperatures in the 80s. Donna. All righty. Thanks a lot. Well, I think I might need the prompter to know where I am. Here we it's go. We're all I, together, I, yes, Donna. I see that, Kevin. <laughs> Time now for our we're all in this together and this is where we share with you at home those pictures that let us know what you're doing and I love this one. Felicia Parker sent us this photo saying the family was having fun in the sun. The kids got to try out their new water slide and gorilla sprinkler and even had water balloons on hand. Sounds like a great day. And Kent Berry of Gravel Ridge, he says he's practicing his culinary skills at home, preparing a German beef dish called Rouladen, which has red kraut and spetzel and asparagus. Look at that. Okay. Um, <laughs> he should have brought I, us I'm some. I'm just trying to figure out when that's going to be served and where <laughs> we. <laughs> I think it was already served. We're too late. Darn it. That did look good. <laughs> we also continue to recognize the people who work on the front lines, and we all know they play an important role. So let's see who we're shining the spotlight on tonight. This is Christina Turner, who's been a cook at the North Little Rock VA Hospital for five years. She says she loves serving our veterans even more during this national crisis. What an important role and thank you for your hard work. Diane James is an officer and food prep supervisor at Cummins Prison and is working every day on the front lines to maintain the health and safety of those in the facility. Thanks for what you do as well. We 
appreciate both of them. And keep those pictures coming. You can email them to pics at fox16.com or you can put them on social media. Just make sure you use that hashtag AR together. Sports director Westmore will join us next. He's going to take a look at NASCAR's first race since suspending operations due to the pandemic. And we'll hear from a Little Rock man that was part of the historic race is next in Fox 16 Sports. Now, Fox 16 Sports with Wes Moore. Sports is coming back to the United States with the return of NASCAR. Yesterday, the first race was held at Darlington Raceway in South Carolina. Kevin Harvick picked up the win, but there wasn't much celebrating. NASCAR has strict regulations, plenty of social distancing, masks, and smaller crews. Little Rock's Chris Gale is the crew chief for Eric Jones. He joined me today on 1037 The Buzz. Chris said it was a little eerie with no fans, but feels like NASCAR is taking the right precautions to get them back on the track. To be honest, let's, let's talk about it, right? You're one of the first sports going back. You need to be that way, right? Like, we don't need to have a problem being the first sports back. We need to take it all seriously and we need to do everything we can to keep everyone safe. You know, they had done a lot of work ahead of time communicating with the teams on what to expect you know, all the protocols, what not to do, and, and, it, and it went off pretty seamless. You know, I, I guess I was expecting to have a little more of a pickup here or there, and it went off pretty smooth. Eric Jones, by the way, finished eighth. Gale says a loose wheel prevented a better finish. The loose wheel is also costing Gale. He says he'll be suspended for the next race Wednesday. The Toyota 500, also at Darlington. Gale says it's pretty clear cut. The crew chief takes the penalty for mistakes made by the pit crew. I'm not mad. I mean, gosh, most of those guys, right, in the heat of the moment, they do not mean to do that, right? That guy feels worse about that mm. situation, about having that problem, than probably I do, right? He has to look himself in the mirror and feel like he let the team down. So I don't hold that against the pit crew at all, and I know that as bad as that was and where it cost me sitting out of race and cost us some money, they'll make it up at some other point. 
Tonight, senior sports send-off honors Gracie Marley from Harmony Grove High School. Gracie has been a cheerleader since the seventh grade. She made the NCAA All-American Cheer Squad for four times and was All-State Cheerleader three years and won five national championships. She will attend Pulaski Tech. Congratulations, Gracie, and good luck. Coming up tonight, we'll show you how the class of 2021 is changing the way Arkansas soccer recruits.